Hey guys, today we're starting a new series in which I'm going to show you how to use TensorFlow.js in a React.js application and uh, most specifically we're going to uh, develop a to-do application in React and in that application we're going to use uh, embeddings in order to suggest icons for your to-do list. So basically I'm going to show you how to implement this and this is called the cute list or whatever and in here you can see that you can input your uh, to-do name or your task name so let's start with something like read math text book and as soon as you write this you're going to see that there is a suggestion for your icon and in this case it's going to be a book so I'm going to accept the suggestion by clicking on it and then I'm going to save the task uh, again I'm going to try out a new some new task let's say uh, hit the gym and again we have a suggestion and this time the suggestion is uh, this running icon or sports icon whatever you want to call that and I again I'm going to accept that and then I'm going to save the task again and as you can see uh, each icon actually has a different color so uh, this uh, basically is going to be the the demo app or the application that we're going to use or uh, actually develop so for the purpose of this app I'm going to first introduce you to the concept of embeddings and then we're going to start with a simple react app in which we're going to implement the to do uh, to, to implement the model that is going to suggest the actual icon you can play around with this app at the cutelist.netlify.com or you can have a look at the complete source code for this in the next couple of videos uh, and these are going to be linked down in the description below so let's start with something that is uh, pretty uh, important for our subject and this is uh, going to be the concept of embeddings so let's say that we have a fictional to-do list app in which we are going to have the following uh, two uh, to do's uh, the first one is going to be workout for 15 minutes or something like that and it's going to have an icon called a run and the next one let's say it's read book and the icon for that one is going to be a book so uh, as you may already know computers are not good with text or images they just understand numbers so for that reason we're going to need some way to encode or transform this text to a number or to numbers or more importantly we're going to need a way to transform this text into somewhat uh, some kind of a vector which is comprised of numbers of course so for this reason uh, we can employ actually different strategies and those strategies uh, depending on the task you might have might work better or they might not perform as well as you would like one rather simple strategy that we've seen already is one hot encoding so in this uh, in this uh, approach we can use actually the the one hot encoded vectors which basically represent each word with uh, one and then a couple of zeros and each zero is going to be the other words in the complete vocabulary of your task so here is an example let's say we that we have uh, hit the gym to do as an example and let's say that our complete vocabulary is comprised of hit run and the the and gym so in this case we can encode the hit word with one and then followed by zeros that the word encoded with uh, two zeros one and then again a zero at the end and gym we can encode with zeros and one at the end so one particular uh, negative of this approach is that uh, actually we can't 
uh, use these vectors to uh, to compute somewhat uh, to compute the similarity between to dos uh, something we are going to need to do in order to uh, classify our to dos and suggest icons for those and the other thing is that this representation is very inefficient as uh, is very inefficient when it comes to storing or memory of your computer so let's have a look at the embeddings representation which is somewhat a new, of a new concept for us and this is uh, the concept of word embeddings word embeddings actually represent again each word as a vector but the number of columns or the number of embeddings or parameters in this embedding is actually chosen by the person who is developing the model so in this example we have a four dimensional embedding and as you can see each word is represented using four different floating point numbers and the interesting thing com in here compared to the one hot encoding is the fact that these numbers are rather different than zero and one and actually you can use these numbers to compute the similarity between different words so you might imagine that this will be really helpful when we are trying to classify different to do's uh, in the book or running uh, for the when suggesting different uh, icons for the running and the yeah and the running and the book icons that we have in our example so let's have a look at how we can use embeddings in tensorflow js for now i'm going to show you a really simple example and this example starts with this uh, set of to do's so we have let me magnify that we have hit the gym go for a run study math watch biology lectures date with michelle and have dinner with pam so as you can see uh, those to do's or those you can pair the first two the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth to do they belong to somewhat similar categories so can we develop an algorithm that is going to agree with us that these pairs actually are relatively similar and again I'm going to show you in the later videos why this is important and how we can use that to suggest icon for to do's that we haven't seen before so let's start with um, developing a simple project in uh, VS Code and this this project is going to be using a simple template um, we have a simple html page and in here we have a sentences container and a similarity matrix and we're going to see how we're going to use those in a bit uh, the next important thing is the source directory and in here uh, i've already defined the to do's as a constant and we have a run function which at first hides the loading indicator and then renders the to do's that we've already seen on the html page we have another file called similarity matrix that i'm not going to show the source code for it but you can um, have a look at it later when you are browsing through the complete source code and we have some styling in the form of css so let's start by uh, developing a simple hmm, let me actually delete this file oh no i'm not going to delete that okay that's fine so let's start by uh, developing by using a, an already pre-trained model called universal sentence encoder and this model is provided by uh, tensorflow.js and you can go to the github repo called tfgs models and in here we have a folder called universal sentence encoder so the universal sentence encoder is basically a pre-trained model that encodes text into uh, 5, 512 
uh, dimensional embeddings and as you can see most of the those most of the users that are going to use this model are actually interested in sentiment classification and texture similarity analysis and the second category is really important for us so we are going to use this model for textual similarity another important thing is that which is not covered actually here uh, but this model is practically trained for use cases where the text are rather uh, small or they're like comprised or of two three four five words so this is perfect for us since uh, to do uh, the most important uh, the mo to do most commonly you can find in your to-do list or whatever wherever uh, you can see that most of those are comprised of up to like five to ten word to ten words maybe at, at their maximum so this is like the perfect model for us and this is already pre-trained and done and we can use it really easily in tensorflow.js so let's have a look how at how we can do that the first thing i'm going to show you is how to install that tensorflow.js uh, universal central sentence encoder model and i'm going to use yarn and i'm going to add tensorflow-models universal sentence encoder okay so this one is installing right now and the next thing i'm going to do is actually install uh, tensorflow.js okay and the uh, last thing i'm going to do is actually install a d3 library called scale chromatic which we are going to use in a bit later and this one is actually used in the similarity matrix code so i'm not going to show you how how you're going to use that okay so now that we have all the dependencies already installed we can go in the index file of our javascript uh, project and in here i'm going to import the universal sentence encoder like that and to use this i'm going to load the model in the run function and we are going to do that using the load method so just to check if everything is running smoothly i am going to start the yarn and this is going to build our project and I'm going to just make sure that everything is running smoothly in here. And as you can see, the model is lo loading. Let me check if there are any errors. And as you can see, you cannot access model before initialization. So, oh, I'm sorry. I have a typo in here so this should be better now I guess okay so we have our sentences so everything should be running smoothly and now that we have the model loaded we can use that model to actually extract embeddings for our uh, for let's say the first to do that we have in here and to do that I am going to use the embed method on the model uh, object so let's get to it okay so after I have the embedding I'm going to take the shape of the resulting tensor and I expect the resulting tensor to be of shape 1 because we have uh, only one example in here and then uh, 512 for the each embedding that this model is trained with and if I go to the console you can see that we have a 
indeed a shape of 1 and 512 so that seems okay let's actually have a look at what the values of this tensor are and as you can see we have a float array that contains 512 elements and in here we have uh, values that are between minus 1 and 1 I believe so that looks pretty good the next thing I'm going to show you is how to uh, actually compute so yes the next thing I'm going to show you is how to use the embeddings to compute the similarity score between a pair of to-dos. So to do that, I'm going to define a function that is called similarity score and I'm going to just copy and paste that in here. Most of this code is actually taken from the universal sentence encoder demo that is provided in GitHub. So I've just made a couple of tweaks to that and for this function we are going to pass in the embeddings for the like all to do's in our example and in here i'm going to take just the embeddings for the first sentence on, or the first to do and the second to do and i'm going to just take the dot product of those matrices and i'm going to specify that i don't want to transpose the first parameter and I am going to actually take the transpose of the second one. So uh, this is expected to be a scour value or a scour tensor. So we're just taking the first element from that. And this is the score of the or the similarity between a pair of to do's. So let me have a let me show you how we can use that. So to do that, we are going to take all embeddings for our to do's. then I'm going to take the pair, the first, the, the similarity score of the first pair of our to-dos. Uh, note that this is an async function. So in here I'm going to pass in the index 0 for the first element and the 1 for the second element and I'm going to pass in the to-do embeddings and I'm going to print out the resulting score like that and as you can see I'm just printing the zeroth element the first element and then the score that is returned for from this function so the resulting execution should be something like okay so we have the result which is something along the lines let me just increase that for you guys so we have a similarity of roughly 0 0.6 between these two which is uh, okay because the similarity is should fluctuate between or should range from 0 to 1 so a similarity of 0 0.6 is actually pretty large or pretty good so let me check uh, the same thing but for the first and the third element or the third to do so this is hit the gym and study math and in here we expect the similarity to be much less so let's try out this and i'm going to just yank that first third yep first third and again, I'm going to print the similarity between those. Yep. First, third. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, this looks horrible, but... Well, let me just check that. Okay, so we have hit the gym, go for a run, 
again the same similarity and hit the gym study mat we have a similarity of about 0.4 which is much much less something that we really expect and this is this looks pretty good actually so let's have a final example in which we are going to print in a may actually uh, to draw a matrix that represents the similarity between all the different to do's or all the different pairs in our example so to do that i'm going to use a function defined in the similarity matrix file and that function is called render similarity matrix and this function is actually asynchronous so this function expects the model and all to do's that we have let me see if okay so visual studio code is not that good at importing that for us but if i open the file it allows us to import the function and for now if i show you the result you can see that each pair is drawn as a similarity score we have the pretty much the same thing the similarity between the first and the second to do item is pretty large the similarity between the the third and the fourth to do is again pretty large too and the fifth and the, si and the sixth is pretty large as well so as you can see uh, using a pre-trained model we can use that pre-trained pre model and develop uh, rather easily a way to score how similar uh, two phrases or two to-dos are S how we can use that to develop the the cute list app i'm going to show you in the next couple of videos but uh, we are pretty much done with developing embeddings and understanding what embeddings are once again i'm going to cover to put the complete source code in the link below please like and subscribe so i'll show you how to develop the complete cute list app in the next couple of videos thanks for watching bye guys